Hello everyone, in this video I'll be doing Advent of Code 2021 Day 3. Advent of Code is a challenge where in December two puzzles are released every day to count down the days to Christmas. So I'll be doing this puzzle real quick and then you'll be seeing an explanation of both puzzles. All right, let's go. Um, part one is complete. It's time for part two now. All right, so problems one and two I have finished. And now I suppose it's time to explain the problems. So for part one, our submarine has been making some odd creaking noises. So you ask it to produce a diagnostic report just in case. Our diagnostic report consists of a bunch of lines containing binary strings. And just as a quick refresher, binary is a system of writing numbers in base 2. So it's different from our usual way of writing numbers in base 10. Basically, for example, this number 101010 base 2 is 42 in base 10 because it is 32 plus 8 plus 2. So every digit in this binary number stands for a certain value, which is a power of 2. Also, instead of saying binary digits all the time, we like to say bits because it's shorter and it sounds cool. Um, bits comes from the bi in binary and the t in digits. So, you know, there's a fun fact for you. So we are given a bunch of numbers, um, a bunch of binary numbers consisting of bits. Each bit is a 0 or a 1. Um, what we want to do is construct a new number. Now this number is called the gamma rate. And the gamma rate is, is computed by taking all of the numbers, um, finding their, considering their first place value, finding out which digit is most common. So in this example, that would be one because one appears seven times while zero only appears five. So our gamma value would be one. Similarly, our second gamma value would be zero. And let me just take a look here. Uh, it would be uh, 10110. Most common digit in the third place value is 1, and then 1, and then 0. So this is the gamma value taken by finding the most frequent bit in each place value. Now, getting the bits is as simple as accessing an index in a string. For part two, I'm actually going to use a different method, which is uh, bit manipulation. So I'll explain that later on. But um, for part one, I just used it. I just used strings, which is not like the intended way you're supposed to work with numbers. But I figured it was easier, and I also wanted to provide a contrast between different ways of working with binary. Um, we also need to figure out, in addition to the gamma rate, an epsilon rate. So this epsilon rate is instead of taking the most common value, it's taking the least common value, which is the same as just negating this. So like flipping every bit. I didn't realize that while I was doing the problem, so I mean, actually, I, I didn't realize it, but I did something essentially equivalent. So basically, in this code here, um, these two lines, if you look at it, um, list comprehension in Python, very useful. We are finding the number of zeros um, in a given place value. So we're looping through the place values, and we're finding the number of zeros in each place value and the number of ones in each place value. Whichever digit is more common, we set it as the gamma rate. Whichever digit is least common, we set it as the epsilon rate. So yeah, there we go. The code's pretty simple. At the end, we convert these numbers, which are still strings, the gamma rate and epsilon rate. They're strings, because we set each of their digits as a string, um, or a character if you like. So we turn them into uh, integers using the very convenient int casting function in Python, which allows you to convert strings to integers in whatever base you want. So you can convert binary to an integer base 7 to an integer, base 10 to an integer is what we're most familiar with. Um, but you can use whatever function you like in your favorite language. So yeah, that's pretty much part one. Pretty uh, simple, I think, introduction to working with binary. Might be a bit finicky to work out, but yeah. All right, and then for part two, let me actually read the problem. Um, there's some more stuff in this diagnostic report that isn't just the gamma rate and the epsilon rate. We have a oxygen generator rating and a carbon dioxide scrubber rating. Um, I guess this is supposed to fit in with the uh, submarine theme. So what we have here is we need to determine an oxygen generator rating and we need to determine a carbon dioxide scrubber rating. 
uh, by a given formula. And this formula is slightly more complicated than part one. Basically, what we have to do is we're given this list of integers, right? Um, in binary form, I'm just writing out random stuff here. Maybe I should actually copy the input. So bitwise and is actually a bit more complicated than this, but this is the uh, the very important bit, pun not intended, the very important aspect of bitwise and that we're going to use. If you find this interesting, I highly suggest you look up bitwise operators in the future. Uh, and to get this value A, we use one left shift post, which basically just adds post number of zeros to the end of A in its binary representation. And this is equal to 2 to the power of position. So we find the number of ones by adding together everything that produces this instead of this. And we find zeros by doing everything else. I could have done that for part one, but I was kind of lazy. This might, I mean, it depends what you think is more lazy. But anyway, uh, to get the number of zeros, we just do what is not ones. Then if zeros are greater than ones, we want to remove everything that does not have a zero. So um, we only want to keep the keep the numbers that have a zero at this position. And we can do that using a filter function, which is really useful in Python. Um, you can also do this in JavaScript. I'm not sure if you can do it in Java. You probably can. Um, C++, I'm sure you can. That was very few languages. But um, you basically just want to filter out a bunch of stuff from a list or an array, and I'm sure you can search up documentation for that in your language. So we only keep the desired numbers that conform to our bit uh, filter. What, what do they call it? Uh, a bit criteria. And then for carbon dioxide, we do the same thing, except we reverse this stuff. So we make it uh, keep the ones if zero are most common and keep the zeros if ones are most common. At the end, these are actually still numbers because the numbers left in this list are actually integers. So after we've eliminated a bunch of these, then we only have one of them to keep, which is an integer. This is our carbon dioxide rating. This is our oxygen rating, and this is our carbon dioxide rating. And then we just print out our answer. So yeah, pretty simple. Hopefully that was a good explanation of today's puzzles. I feel like this is a great puzzle to uh, get people introduced to binary operations in programming. They're also introduced in quite quite a friendly way, I think, um, and it kind of forces you to consider how to work with binary as strings and as integers in your language. So that's why I did both strings and integers uh, here. Hopefully you learned a lot from this puzzle. I think. I enjoyed it quite a bit, although I did have a few bugs which made it frustrating. But I, I really like this. Um, I think the plot, plot didn't advance very much, but kind of adds to like the story that you know this is a troublesome situation and you need to solve problems to do stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed the puzzle. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I will see you also. If you have any feedback um, or questions or whatever. Leave it in the comments below, and hopefully I'll respond. So, yeah, that's it for day three of Advent of Code 2021. Hopefully I will see you, I mean, I will see you, I will see you tomorrow for day four.